say, excuse me. Yes, sir? Have you seen Mr. Clayton anywhere? Mr. Clayton, sir? Uh, he was here a minute ago. Uh, oh, there he is, sir. The window seat in the corner. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry, didn't see him. Thank you. And so, there I was, standing with my golf club ready. <laughs> ah, Sanderson. Ah. There you are, at last. Hello, Clayton. Hello, old boy. Hello, Evans. Wish. Hello, Sanderson. I'm terribly sorry being so late. Thought you weren't coming. No, I really am truly sorry. Had trouble with the car. Oh, oh. not an accident, I hope. No, nothing like that. Just a mechanical fault. Serious? Nothing I couldn't sort out myself, fortunately, but it held me up for over an hour. How I admire people with practical minds. <laughs> Well, you look none the worse for wear, anyway. Well, I've been up to my room to clean up and change. Where have you put your clubs, then? Left them in the car. Thought I'd pick them up as we go out. Ah. I didn't know whether you might be out on the course already. What, start without you, Sanderson? What kind of chaps do you think we are? <laughs> your late arrival gave us an excuse for another drink. Uh, Clayton is determined to win today, Sanderson, yeah. even if he has to resort to getting the competitors totally drunk. Oh, what a ah. thing to say, old boy. <laughs> Most unsportsmanlike. <laughs> Jerry! Coming, sir. Same again, please. What do you want, Sanderson? Look, as I was late, let me get them, will Nonsense. you? Nonsense. No, please, I'd like to. Won't hear of it, old boy. What do you want? Well, pink gin, if you don't mind. And a pink gin, Jerry. Large one. No, look, steady on. What's the matter, Sanderson? With one of those inside you, you'd be able to hole in one. <laughs> Mark my words. <laughs> uh, who was the last club member to hole in one? Don't tell me you've forgotten, Wish. Hmm. Weatherby. <laughs> Stanley Weatherby. Yes. That's right. Hold in one didn't buy a solar drink, not even his partner. Hold in one didn't even set foot in the bar. Oh, I remember now. Clearly, yes. no gentleman. I was here the day it happened. I saw it with my own eyes. News spread like wildfire. He came back, looked at his watch, yeah. mumbled something about being in a hurry, acknowledged members who were applauding him, got into his rows, drove off. God, yeah. man was a cat. Owned half of Yorkshire. Half of Yorkshire, Clayton. All oh, right, Sanderson. A third. <laughs> well, <laughs> certainly several villages around the Millers. <laughs> of course, he, he, he didn't remain a member for long. Sure hope not. It was put to him, tactfully, of course, that it simply wasn't done. Not in golfing circles or any other circles frequented by a gentleman. Why? As he wasn't considered a gentleman, he was told to leave forthwith. Yeah. I was on the management committee at the time. He cried. Oh, come on, Clayton. I tell you, he cried, Sanderson. Well, very nearly. Mm. Eyes were moist. <clears throat> ah, a Here we are, gentlemen. Oh, good. <laughs> my, thank you, Jerry. Thank you, sir. On my tab. No, no, I, oh, no, no. I, I, it's my tab, really. Actually, I, I, I think it's my right. This right. For heaven's sake, will you stop arguing like a lot of old women? <laughs> this is my treat. Thank you, Jerry. Sir? Cheers, then. Oh, oh, cheers. Well. Cheers, Clayton. Cheers, cheers old man. Thank you. Now, now, listen to me. I feel lucky today. I'll put a fiver in the kitty for anyone who gets three under par. Uh -huh. now, how about it? Three under par? Oh, come on, wish, old man. You can play jolly well when you put your mind to it. Well... And money has a way of concentrating the mind. Uh -huh. I'm game. <laughs> Thought you might be, Evans. <laughs> what about you, Sarnison? Hmm. All right. Right. We'll down this lot and then tea off, eh? Right. I've ordered roast duck for dinner tonight. Aha. How's that? Marvellous. Uh, I, I think Marvelous. we should have done uh, that. Really some pleasant. contribution here. Oh, no. Look, I tell you, my friends, I feel lucky. I'll be taking that 15 pounds off you later on when I win our little bet. <laughs> So you'll be paying for dinner anyway. Well, Clayton, you were true to your word. Hmm? We ended up paying for the meal. Oh, oh yes. Well, I knew you would. <laughs> you just feel lucky, that's all. <coughs> More brandy, anyone? Not for me, thank you. No, no, thank you. Uh, just a little, please, Clayton, yes. Mm, we can finish this decanter together, eh, you wish, old chap? Oh, I, I, I don't know about that. I, I can't move as it is. Well, you don't have to move to enjoy brandy, old boy. Just lie there, soak it up. 
like a Christmas pudding. <laughs> there. Ah, oh, thank you, thank you. Poke the fire, someone. Getting low. Ah, uh, I'll do it. Thank you, wish, old boy. Yeah, that's better. You know, I stayed here last night. No. Neither did I. I was absolutely alone in the place. Oh, not absolutely alone, surely. What about the domestics? Oh, well, of course the domestics were here, Wish. But they sleep in the other wing. Well. Yes? Hmm. You were going to say... No, nothing, nothing. nothing. Yes, yes, you were, Clayton. Something happened last night. Well, I, uh... I caught a ghost, actually. Caught a ghost, did you? Yes. And where is it? Caught a ghost! You must tell us about it. You don't seem in the least bit surprised, Evans. I suppose your four weeks in the great spaces of America have made you impervious to such pronouncements. <laughs> Not at all, old boy. I'm interested to see whether your story matches the size of some of those the Americans have a habit of telling at the drop of a hat. Yeah, or, or an oil well, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I see. Mm. Mm. Wish, old chap. Uh, yes, Clint? Close the door, will you? Huh? I, I know no one deliberately eavesdrops in the club, but I wouldn't want to upset our very excellent service with any rumours of ghosts. Oh, come no, on, no. And this ghost, well, it wasn't a normal ghost. Don't think it'll come back again, ever. <coughs> Are you serious? Close the door, Wish. There's a good fellow. Oh. Right. <laughs> you mean to say you didn't keep it? Are you actually taking him seriously, Sanderson? The truth is I hadn't the heart to. You hadn't the heart to do what? Keep it. You are serious? Yes. A ghost? Yes. Come on, Clayton. You've drunk too much brandy. The fact is, it really was a ghost. I'm sure of it. As sure as I'm talking to you now. I'm not joking. I mean what I say. Well, I think I will have a little more brandy, if you don't mind, please, Wish. Oh, yes, yes, of course, Evans. It's the strangest thing that's ever happened to me in my life. You know, I never believed in ghosts or anything of the sort before, ever. And then I bag one in the corner. You, uh... You talk to it? Yes. For the space of an hour or more, I suppose. Chatty. Poor devil was in trouble. Sobbing, was he? If you must know, yes, poor fellow. I, I, I never realised the poor sort of thing a ghost might be. I took an advantage. Look, Clayton, I, I don't understand. You're, you're having us on, aren't you? No, don't you understand? Yet? A person remains just the same person, even though he's disembodied. That's a thing we too often forget. People with a certain strength and fixity of purpose, most haunting ghosts, you know, must be as single-minded, as monomaniacs and as opposite as mules to come back again and again. This poor creature wasn't like that. Good God. I say it in all kindness, but that is the plain truth of the case. Even at the first glance, he struck me as being weak. Well, I don't know. You don't know what, Evans? I don't know what to say. Well, don't say anything, my friend. Just listen. I came upon him in the long passage. His back was towards me, and I saw him first. Right off, I knew him for a ghost. He was transparent and whitish. Clean through his chest, I could see the glimmer of the little window at the end. And not only his physique, but his attitude struck me as being weak. He looked as though he didn't know what to do. Well, what sort of physique? Um, lean. Uh, you know, uh, that sort of young man's neck that has two great flutings down the back here and here. And a little meanish head with scrubby hair and rather bad ears. Shoulders bad, hmm. narrower than the hips. Uh, turned down collar ready-made short jacket, trousers baggy, and a little frayed at the heels. I came very quietly up the staircase, and I saw him. I stopped dead at that, taking him in. I wasn't a bit afraid. I think that in most of these affairs one is never 
nearly so afraid or excited as one imagines one might be. I was surprised and interested. Hmm. I thought, good Lord, here's a ghost at last. And I hadn't believed for a moment in ghosts during my whole life. Mm. <clears throat> I suppose I wasn't on the landing a moment before he found out I was there. He turned on me sharply, and I saw the face of a, an immature young man. A weak nose, scrubby little moustache, and a feeble chin. So, for an instant, we stood. He looking over his shoulder at me, and, and we regarded one another. Then he seemed to remember his high calling. He turned round drew himself up, projected his face, raised his arms, spread his hands in approved ghost fashion, and came towards me. As he did so, his little jaw dropped, and he emitted a faint, drawn-out boo. Oh, <laughs> it, it wasn't a bit dreadful. <laughs> boo, I said. You don't belong to this place. What are you doing here? Are you a member? I said. And just to show him I didn't care a pin for him, I stepped through a corner of him and made to light my candle. What are you doing here? I said. He, he dropped his hands and stopped his booing, and there he stood, abashed and awkward, the ghost of a weak, silly, aimless young man. I am haunting, he said. You haven't any business to, I said. I'm a ghost, he said. <laughs> <laughs> well, that may be, but you haven't any business to haunt here. This is a respectable private club. If I were you, I wouldn't wait for Cockrow. I'd vanish right away. Well, he looked embarrassed. The fact is, sir, I can't, he said. You can't, I said. No, sir, there's something I've forgotten. I've been hanging about here since midnight last night, hiding in the cupboards of empty bedrooms and things like that. I'm flurried. I've never come <clears throat> haunting before, and it seems to put me out. Come on, Clayton, you can't be serious. Leave him, leave him, Evans. Let him continue. Yeah, let's hear the end of it, at least. Put you out, I said. Yes, sir. I've tried to do it several times, and it doesn't come off. Some little thing has slipped me, and I can't get back. Well, that rather bowled me over. He looked at me in such an abject way that for the life of me I couldn't keep up quite the high hectoring vein that I'd adopted. Mm. Oh, that's queer, then, I said. And as I spoke, I fancied I heard someone moving about down below. Come into my room and tell me about it, I said. So we did. Sit on the armchair and tell me, old chap, how you got yourself into this awkward position, I said. Are you telling us that you sat together in your bedroom upstairs? No, no. He said he wouldn't sit down. He'd prefer to flit up and down the room if it was all right by me. And so he did. In a little while, we were deep in a long and serious talk. He hadn't a particularly honest face. But being transparent, of course, he couldn't avoid telling the truth. Eh? I, uh, I don't... What, what, what's that? What, what's that wish? Being transparent. Couldn't avoid telling the truth. I, I don't see it. I don't see it. But it is so, I can assure you. I don't believe he got once a nail's breadth off the Bible truth. He, he told me how he'd been killed. He went down into a London basement with a candle to look for a leakage of gas. Poor wretch. That's what I thought. And the more he talked, the more I thought it. There he was, purposeless in life and purposeless out of it. He talked of his father and his mother and his schoolmaster and all who had ever been anything to do with him in the world. He'd been too sensitive too nervous. None of them had ever valued him properly or understood him, he said. He'd never had a real friend in the world, I think. Never had a success. Shirked games and failed examinations. Mm. And where are you now? I asked. And what did he say to that? Well, he wasn't clear on the point at all. The impression he gave me was of a sort of vague, intermediate state. A special reserve for souls too non-existent for anything so positive as either sin or virtue. Ah, uh, I don't know. He was much too egotistical and unobservant to give me any clear idea of the kind of place, the kind of country there is on the other side of things. Mm. Wherever he was, he seemed to have fallen in with a set of kindred spirits, ghosts of weak 
Cockney young men who were on a footing of Christian names. And among these, there was certainly a lot of talk about going haunting. Really? Yeah, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> yeah. Going haunting. They seemed to think haunting a tremendous adventure. Most of them funked it all the time. And did you think this haunting of theirs to be a tremendous adventure for you, Clayton? Oh. <laughs> you still don't believe it, do you? Yeah, go on, Clayton. You see, Sanderson, it appeals to the actor. Ah, yes, but Wish here is a professional actor. You're not. Now, uh, at the moment, I can see clear through you. Mm. Anyway, these are the impressions he gave me. Oh, I may, of course, have been in a rather uncritical state. But that was the sort of background he gave to himself. He kept flitting up and down with his thin voice going, talking about his wretched self, and never a word of clear, firm statement from first to last. He was thinner and sillier and more pointless than if he'd been real and alive. Only then, you know, he, he wouldn't have been in my bedroom here. Hmm. If he had been alive, I should have kicked mm. him out. Of course, then, are poor mortals like that. Yeah, and there's just as much chance of their having ghosts uh, as the rest of us. See, what gave a sort of point to him, you know, was the fact that he did seem within limits to have found himself out. The mess he'd made of haunting had depressed him terribly. He'd been told it would be a lark. He'd come expecting it to be a lark. And, and here it was, nothing but another failure added to his record. He paused and stood regarding me. He remarked that, strange as it may seem to me, nobody had given him the amount of sympathy I was giving him now. Don't you brood on these things too much, I said. The thing you've got to do is to get out of this. Get out of this sharp. You pull yourself together and try I can't, he said. You try, I said. And try he did. Try? How? Uh, a gleam of interest from Sanderson here at last. Well, well, well. Passes. Passes? What do you mean, passes? A complicated series of gestures and passes with the hands. Now, that's how he'd come in, and that's how he had got to get out again. Lord, what a business I had. But how could any series of passes My possibly... My dear man, you want everything clear. I don't know how. All I know is that you do, that he did. After a fearful time, you know, he got his passes right. And suddenly, he disappeared. Huh. And well, did you observe these passes, these gestures? Ye yes, yes. It was very strange. I can't, he said. And suddenly he sat down on a little chair at the foot of the bed and began to sob. Lord, what a harrowing, whimpering thing he seemed. You pull yourself together, I said. I tried to pat him on the back and, and my confounded hand went through him. <laughs> By that time, you know, I wasn't nearly so massive as I'd been on the landing. I got the full strangeness of it all. I remember snatching my hand back out of him, as it were, with a little thrill and walking over to the dressing table. You pull yourself together, I said to him, and try. And in order to encourage him and help him, I began to try as well. What, the passes? Yes, the passes. I tried them as well. But wasn't that rather... No, no, this, this is interesting. Oh, it's interesting now, is it, Sanderson? You mean to say that this ghost of yours gave away... Did his level best to give away the whole confounded barrier? Yes. yes. Yeah, he didn't, though. He couldn't. Or oh, he would have gone there too. And that's precisely it. That is precisely it. B but at last he did it? At last he did it, yes. I had to keep him up to it hard, but he did it at last, rather suddenly. He despaired. We had a scene. Then he got up abruptly and asked me to go through the whole performance slowly so that he might see. I believe, he said. If I could see, I should spot what was wrong at once. And he did. I know, he said. What do you know, said I. I can't do it if you look at me. I really can't. It's been partly that all along. I'm such a nervous fellow that you put me out. Well, we had an argument. Naturally, I wanted to see. But he was as obstinate as a mule, and suddenly I'd come over as tired as a dog. All right, I said, I won't look at you. And I turned towards the mirror on the wardrobe by the bed. He started off very fast. I tried to follow him by looking in the looking glass. 
round with his arms and hands, so and so, and then, with a rush, he came to the last gesture of all. You stand erect and open out your arms, like this. Just like this, he stood. And then he didn't. Hmm? I wheeled around from the looking glass to him. There was nothing. I was alone with the flaring candles and a staggering mind. No. What had happened? Hmm? Had anything happened? Had I been dreaming? And then, with an absurd note of finality, the clock upon the landing discovered the moment was right for striking one. So, <coughs> ping! <coughs> That's all that happened. And then you went to bed? What else was there to do? And th the passes? Mm, I believe I could do them now. Well, could you really? Yes. They won't work. No, but if they do... I'd rather you didn't, Clayton. Why? I'd rather he didn't, that's all. But he hasn't got them right. All the same, I'd just rather he didn't. Mm. You, you don't, in all honesty. Well, true or not, to go through those gestures and passes would... Well, it would be mocking a serious matter. Yes, yes, but you, you just can't believe Why it. Why shouldn't I believe what he told us? None of us knows what happens after... Well, it's possible, that's all. Clayton, you're too good a liar for us. Most of it was all right, but that disappearance... Tell us, it's a tale of cock and bull, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You watch me, Sanderson. Just you watch me. What are you doing? He's going through the passes. Well, I don't think... Look, Clayton, it was a good tale, but I really don't think you... There! That's very good, Clayton. But uh, as a Freemason and a member of the Lodge of the Four Kings, I know many of these gestures, and there's one little detail left out. Uh, I know. I believe I could tell you which. Well? This one. Right? Yes? That, you know, was what he couldn't get right. Look, how do you... How do you... Look, most of this business, and particularly how you invented it, I don't understand at all, but just that phase I do. Now, these happen to be a series of gestures connected with a certain branch of esoteric masonry, known only to a few, including myself. And I do not see I can do any harm in telling you just the proper twist of the hands. After all, if you know, you know, and if you don't, you don't. I know nothing, except what the poor devil let out last night. Then watch me. Now, the part you got wrong should go... like this. Uh -huh. There. You see? Uh-huh. Now I can do the whole thing right. Can I not? If you want to, yes. I imagine you can. I wouldn't begin, Clayton, if I were you. It's all right. Matter is indestructible. You don't think any jiggity-pokery of this sort is going to snatch Clayton into the world of shades. Not it. You, you may try, Clayton, as far as I'm concerned, until your arms drop off at the shoulders. I don't believe that, Clayton. You've made me half believe in that story somehow, and I... I don't want to see the thing done. My goodness, are you afraid, Wish? I believe that if he goes through these motions right, he'll go. No, no, he'll, he'll not do anything of the sort, because, as we all know, there's only one way out of this world, and Clayton is 30 years from that. Clayton, you're a fool. A damn fool. I decline to argue further. Let the thing be tried. Here goes. No, please! Wish! Please, leave me alone. But supposing... Oh, for thing... God's sake, Wish, shut up! It's up to him! Be quiet, both of you. Th don't you see? Are you all so stupid? He's just having us on. It's another of his jokes. You think so, Sanderson? Of course I do. Look at him. His face. What's happening to his face? My God! He's changing! His face it's... is... It's as if he were frozen. Uh, look out! He's falling! Don't grab him, someone! All right! All right. I, I, I've got him! He's fainted! Oh. What's happened? Is he all right? It wasn't a joke, was it? No. He's dead. <laughs> 